guys welcome to the channel and uh, I guess if you clicked on the thumbnail uh, you're curious to know what I've done to the bike and uh, possibly quite obvious from the from the picture you've seen now and uh, what are you seeing now uh, in front of me if you've noticed something is a little bit different uh, so let's go and talk about it but uh, before I do that I just need to find a nice little spot that I can park up and tell you a little about what I've done to the bike which I'm really really excited this is actually the second time I've jumped on the bike and uh, I'm having a lot of fun guys I won't lie I actually am enjoying this a lot um, yeah so I'm just looking for a nice location uh, to do the video I think I think uh, you know Crystal Palace Park would be appropriate as a you know home to a racing circuit uh, if you guys didn't know uh, I didn't know until possibly a year ago found out from uh, a few people who attended my event they told me about it I did some um, research read into this history and yeah they used to host uh, motor racing and uh, car racing as well uh, you know so it's a very special place it's a shame they, they no longer do any racing there although they did do a couple uh, like fun races uh, I think it was a speed hill or something like that I can't remember exactly <laughs> I already forgot but uh, yeah they did it until a couple of uh, no, actually longer than that, maybe 10 years ago they stopped doing uh, because uh, they just don't want any cars, any bikes um, anywhere really, not even on the roads they make it more and more difficult for all of this so yeah, so at the park there used to be a racing track I'll put it on the uh, on the screen for you to guys have a look and uh, if you're going to dig in a bit more to the history uh, it's lovely to know that there was a racetrack right in the center of London or south of London but yeah so close to 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 the city right um, yeah it's such a shame that they stopped doing I would, uh, I would really love it to have it back and uh, I did the event there to kind of celebrate those uh, uh, motorsporting days so I'm going there there's a couple of spots actually I'll show you a couple of spots that you can actually see bits of the racetrack or you know uh, this is the museum and if you go to the museum there you can actually find a little bit more about the history there's not a lot to be honest uh, so if you look online you'll probably find way more information but they have some pictures and stuff and um, I'll tell you so this this actually bit this from where the van is coming all the way here there was this uh, the hill coming up and this was almost like a straight and you could go straight down now obviously they've changed things but uh, this this was can you imagine cars and motorbikes ripping here uh, obviously you can't do that now <laughs> as much as I would love to uh, and it was go straight so that hill I think they just put it there after but he would go straight and then uh, was three really lovely lovely uh, area now I don't know oh, what's going on here so this guys here I think is a market um, yeah so here they used to do uh, well they used to do here they, uh, they had the paddocks then and you can kind of see parts of the racetrack so the cars and motorbikes will come here there'll probably be loads of paddock stands it was a uh, pretty awesome so I guess this is the market I don't flea market I never knew about it maybe I'll have to come and check it out let's go to find a better place um, because I have in mind a nice little strip uh, that uh, I actually wanted to do the event there but because it's a main road or road inside the park they weren't too keen so I did my event there where we just been uh, it was amazing it was a really good 
uh, event. I really enjoyed it. The weather was great. We had music. We had a few stores selling food. Um, yeah, it was, uh, and obviously coffee. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was really great. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, do you know, that's why I love having a bike. You can just go through any gaps. So this will be part of the racetrack and we're going all the way down but can you imagine this twist is here coming up from there let's go a bit quicker than these guys <laughs> uh, yeah so can you imagine this bit must have been insane uh, coming up and obviously as you're coming up you can actually put the throttle full throttle coming all the way up so we're going, um, I guess, uh, anti-clockwise to the racetrack and these are still bits from the racetrack, can you see? Oh, it's amazing, amazing history, oh, it's such a shame all of this stopped. This is a lovely park as well, it's one of my favourite parks to go to. Uh, my kids love it, uh, great for running, going for nice walks, there's some dinosaur statues for the kids, there's loads of, you know, it's, it's, it's great and they've done the cafe there, they used to have an old cafe, now they've uh, made it much bigger, uh, building much nicer. What are they doing here? They're always doing something. Do you know they didn't have to? Uh, they didn't have these speed bumps, and I guess people on motorbikes <laughs> used to come here and have a bit of fun. So they thought, let's stop that. And there's a look at here. There's a uh, remote control cars or bikes ra uh, racetrack, and you can be a member. So Crystal Palace RC Car Club. If you become a member, I don't have no idea the cost. I would love to. I used to to race, not just for a little bit. I used to more do for a hobby. Then me and my brother tried to get into racing, but you know what? It costs a lot of money and the time, and you know we didn't have that. Uh, but the, the the few times we we did uh, was a lot of fun. There's a skate park just there, which is pretty awesome too. Uh, I wouldn't advise you to do that unless you want to get hurt. <laughs> Where am I going to find a place to record? I wanted there, but uh, I'm trying to find a good spot. Mm. So many cars, there never used to be so many cars here. I think they're doing obviously something here maybe filming do you know what they do a lot of uh, uh, filming here many times this has been closed for uh, filming so and some of them I actually spotted I can't remember the movie but I remember uh, that they record inside that there's a, a track there like for I don't know sprint or long jump or whatever Actually, can you see? I can. I'll show you. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> can you see? Can you see inside? Oh, look. What's going on there? This. Um, maybe I'll do it here. Oh, I wanted a nice, nice view to unveil this gorgeous bike. Let me have a think and then I'll I'll see you in a minute. Let me have a think.
So guys, I found a really nice spot uh, to do the unveil and this is the bike and obviously the most noticeable thing you can see there is the clip points, something I've been wanting to do for many many years but um, I just wasn't sure if I could do it. I was a bit worried uh, about uh, you know taking the top yoke out, doing all the cables, all the a control is something I never done before so obviously you can imagine someone who hasn't uh, never done anything like that or so dramatic or so drastic on a motorcycle I was a bit wary but uh, after uh, working on my CB250N and doing a few more mods on this bike it just gave me a bit more um, confidence to to pursue this and uh, you know I really wanted to to make this the best looking CB 1000 R out there and I, I believe I believe I'm achieving this if not already achieved uh, and I think one of the best things about this is the, obviously the custom paintwork and this is something I was really proud of um, uh, I, I love the red and I just wanted to give homage to the original uh, logo actually it's not the original is uh, the one just after but I really like that I think that's the, my favorite logo of Honda uh, motorcycles and uh, you know having those colors in bringing back the clip-ons in terms of a uh, cafe races I think I think I've done that so let, let's take a look at, uh, uh, at clip-ons the clip-ons are from ABM and these are following the guys from uh, Furrer Moto. Um, uh, the guys did a, a really cool version. I'll put it on the screen for now, just so you guys can have an idea. That was the inspiration for doing the clip points. When I saw that bike, I knew, oh my God, this looks amazing. And this is the bike that Honda should have built it. Uh, because honestly, this is the modern uh, version of a cafe racer. I know the cafe racers were mainly uh, British bikes, but to be honest, most custom work or most cafe racers you see out there um, are made out of Hondas or R90s, but mainly a lot of them are Hondas, to be honest with you. So this is the clip ons, and these are the sport uh, clip ons, and these are. Um, the reason why they sport is because they, they don't have any travel so this bit lifts up if uh, obviously on this one it doesn't because it's the sport mode but if you buy the touring one you can li lift or lower it uh, as you wish um, but it gives a lot of uh, freedom I had to get the slim version I don't know if you can see here so you can see uh, can you see here so this is the slim version and you can actually buy the uh, the other version, which is uh, the standard one, which is a bit thicker. But because uh, on this CB 1000R, it, it slims down here, then it goes uh, bigger here, and then slim down. I don't know why they did it, but anyway. So I had to get this one because if I got any bigger, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't fit properly. So I got this one. And I'm really happy. The quality is amazing. Again, Italians can do things with a lot of style, and the Germans can do things with a lot of quality. <laughs> they just and they they just know how to do it, honestly. Yeah. So this is the um, clip ons. So the other thing that I want to do, obviously, I didn't want to leave the mirrors. I need to buy some caps here. I think about turning this upside down, but I was worried they would hit the tank. Um, so I left it, but you know, something I can change. Um, and I got these uh, again from a German company, the Moto Gadget uh, mirrors and the um, bar and indicators. Now, I can't remember exactly the name, but I think it's the, the Mo. I don't know this is the Mo Blaze disc, and this is Mo. I don't know, mirror? I don't know. It's the cafe version. And the reason why I got this one is because it gives a bit more space here. Uh, and uh, I, I just like it because I can hold the the bike a bit better. Because if, if the mirror was closer to me or to the side, it still would annoy me. And I think this is a better look. I quite like this uh, sporty design. And the indicator is amazing. It's, it just fits in the end, it's gorgeous, it lights up at the front and at the back. It, to be honest, when you turn it on, I'll show you. Uh, can you see? 
well at night you can see it goes all around but it, it is bi-directional it's stronger to the front and a little bit weaker to the back but in some places uh, you might be able to just have these on your bike but here in UK I don't know and uh, I care about safety and to be honest these reserve ones are so little that they just fit nicely there so I'm not going to disturb them so yeah so I removed those indicators there I've moved the handlebar as you can see and uh, this is the leftovers of the top yoke so you had the clamps here Obviously, I'm not going to put the clamps back and I've been thinking about uh, cutting this either there or here but now I'm worried about the structure of the clamp or top yoke and to be honest this is hollow uh, if you put your finger through it you can probably reach al almost up to here so if I cut it I think this bit here at the end it would be too weak and uh, this is something that may affect the safety of the bike and so don't want to mess around with that if i find a company who does a custom one the same style like this uh, this kind of i don't know what you call this style but uh, if, if they can do it to match the same style as the bottom yoke then then i'll do it but for now it doesn't really disturb it doesn't look as uh, uh, as bad as I thought uh, obviously if you stare at it <laughs> it doesn't look great but when you have the mobile there and uh, I'll show you um, it looks uh, quite luck honestly I never had a problem with this until oh god until I put this uh, vibration dampener since I put that it always gave me a problem to fit this because so wobbly so you can't really force it and, and connect it but you see with the phone especially I'll show you here if you jump on a bike it's fine it looks completely fine so yeah so this this is the the reveal the, the work that I've been doing it took me overall a week but only to be very honest with you only because I couldn't work the whole day so it was a few hours on a Monday a few hours on a s Tuesday and so on um, and the, the trickiest bits you'll, you'll probably see because I'm doing a video later if you want to watch about uh, the clip-on uh, conversion so you can uh, wait about a week and then I'll publish that video uh, and the, I'll show you a little bit about uh, the process and the, the problems I incurred going through not nothing major as you can see is here and it's working and it's looking great but uh, this is it this is the, the bike this is not the finished product this is not uh, everything I want to do in a bike there's one more thing at least one more thing coming and it's coming in March uh, which is gonna f go in this bike and trust me it will look awesome your guesses are welcome in the comments below but anyway this is it I uh, hope you like this video guys I hope you love the transformation that this had on the bike I think uh, you know it looks amazing but then again I'm biased this is my bike but I honest think is uh, probably the best looking CB 1000R out there if you disagree write on the comments uh, show me pictures and I'll see if I can best it <laughs> anyway guys thank you so much for watching uh, don't forget to like subscribe share um, and I'll see you in the next one see ya